Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Birchall here. Welcome to my channel in an art journal tutorial. This is part of the Break the Blank page. What comes next? In these videos, I'm going to show you all the additional layers after we broke the page. We broke this page by putting down napkins. We decoupage napkins down with matte medium. Here I just put the napkin pretty much as it was. This napkin's called the Gentleman Napkin and there's a link to Nini's napkins in my description box below. I chose this napkin because for me it evoked all sorts of childhood memories and that's going to tie into the selection of the quote. So before I get started, I'm putting a coat of clear gesso over the entire napkin. I want to basically seal the napkin and turn it into a non-porous surface. It's going to take paint a little bit different because the gesso's there. It's also going to allow me to lift off anything if I make a mistake. And I'm a little uncertain about the next step, so I want to have that security. So the next step is exactly one of those breaking the blank page techniques, using stamping with thick gesso. So I'm going to revisit many of those 10 that are covered in that layer, and they're going to be the next layers. So here I'm using a sink liner that I've cut down, and I'm stamping into this thick gesso and putting it where the focal image Im images aren't. I want to keep the boy and the girl, but I don't really care. I want the color, the vintage of the background there, but I don't, I really want to add some detail to it. Now I could have put a mask over top of the boy and the girl and that would have made my stamping a little bit easier or I could have made my sink liner a little smaller and stamped in it. I'm loving the texture this gives and this texture is going to take future layers of color a little bit differently. Now I love the vintage look of this with the pop of blue in his jeans and the burgundy pink in her dress. But I wanted to make those colors a little bit brighter. I'm going to darken the background so I want these colors to be a little bit brighter. So I grabbed my distress crayons and I'm just scribbling them on my glass tabletop activating it with water and brushing on it. But you could use watercolor crayons, you could use acrylic paint, you can use ink tense blocks to colorize it. And the reason I'm not doing the background right now is I'm a little unsure about what I want to do there. So I'm hoping for inspiration to strike. Meanwhile, I'm going to do what I know. So now I'm going to do the blue jeans again the same way. Now, distress crayons are semi permanent when they're on there. You need to actually apply pressure if I've wet it. They don't reactivate, but if you apply pressure and start moving it, it will. But I also know that I'm really not going to be adding any more wet layers on top of the focal images here. So that's a good time to use any water activated mediums without having to worry about them. I talked a little bit about memories. I have a picture of me in a little red dress, very similar to what this little girl's working on. And I remember in my childhood, carrying pails of water from my grandparents' house. So as I said, this was a trip down memory lane. And because it was memory lane, I wanted to keep it vintage. I wanted to keep that vintage feel. 
So now I'm adding a little bit of the black and gray, dark brown to the hat and the shoes. Again, the goal here is to make the focal image stand out a little bit more. Now, because this was a napkin layer over the whole thing, it also has wonderful, wonderful texture. Now, I want to colorize this, keeping it vintage. I thought about putting blue in the background, chose not to, and I'm putting brown, and then I'm taking a baby wipe and wiping it off. And you can see how the thickened gesso that I stamped with the shelf liner takes the paint in a different way than the napkin background. And I'm loving that effect. It's pushing back what was trees in the background from the napkin, but I kept the gray and it's a very light wash of color. And I've achieved that by using the brown and really thinning down the paint and then wiping it off quickly. That coat of white jet or clear gesso also helps. You can use glazing, glazing medium here as well. That'll keep it And I'm doing little sections. The reason for that is I want to be able to make sure I can lift it. I don't want this the dark brown. That being said, I'm not trying to make all parts of it the same tone. Some is going to be more, more or darker brown than, or lighter brown. And I like that variation. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking because there were trees in the background, I'm thinking a light or a green, a hooker's green or might have looked nice in that background. Maybe I'll have to, I have more of this same napkin. Maybe I'll try this again. The pails, I wanted to make them stand out a little bit more. And so I put silver paint on them. I lost some of the detail and then I come back in later and I try to, to bring some of those lines in with some shading. Here I'm shading with black around the edges and I'm using the float acrylic technique and that's just adding to the vintage look. There's the texture of the napkin and so when I put the paint on some of that moves in the creases of the napkin. Loving that effect. If you look in the top right hand corner, there is an eye. Those are for eye cards. And I will put the link to the Breaking the Blank page where I go over all 10 ways that you can start a page. I, in that video, I am not making complete backgrounds. I am simply putting that first layer and I'm breaking the page. The first layer is going to lead to future decisions. The whole idea behind breaking that blank page is to just start, get out of your head, and once you have something done, the creative process tends to take care of itself. Here I'm using the floating acrylic technique and I'm shading just to make those focal images stand out a little bit more. I'm using an angle brush and black paint. Just giving it some, there you can see the details that I've added back into those pails.
adding some shadows. Now I've got some black paint that I spread on my glass tabletop and I'm stamping with a script stamp on here. And that's another one of the ways that you can break a blank page by stamping or stenciling. And here I'm just choosing to stamp. I want a little bit more detail, but I want it a very small scale. And I'm using black acrylic paint here. I made a mess, cleaned it up. You have that little bit of time. Now I'm splattering with that black. Now, I made a mistake here. I should have masked off at least the faces of my focal images. They did get a little bit splattered. Live and learn. Just take a piece of paper towel, rip it out the size of a circle and put it basically over top of the faces. That would keep it all nice and clean. And then I splattered with the burgundy color. Wanted to introduce more of that burgundy color to the background, just a little bit of color. So I'm floating acrylic around the outside edges. Remember, I already did this with black, but this is just adding that little bit of color. Hints of it. Now I picked the quote, we didn't realize we were making memories, we were just having fun. Again, that is why I chose this napkin to begin with, because of the memory that evoked. Now here I realized that I had put my focal image right in the middle, which meant that I didn't have a lot of room to put my sentiment. And I had to go quite small. So this sentiment, which is in a upcoming, soon to be released sentiment pack, and the theme of time, I shrunk it from its original size to about 50% to make it fit. And that's something you can do with all my sentiments is shrink them or blow them up to make size. I colorized it, this color of the background, the white didn't belong on this vintage. Here I'm using the black acrylic paint again and shading around the sentiment just to give it a little bit more presence. and touching up a little bit more shading as I see where it might be needed. So on this page, we started, we broke the blank page by putting down a layer of napkins. Then we stamped with thick gesso. And then we stamped with black acrylic paint and some finishing. I hope you love it as much as I do. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, follow me on Instagram, and as always, keep creative.